With their heritage in the arcades and driven by the nostalgia that comes from playing difficult and challenging games, today on Get Indie Gaming, we present our classic top 10 roguelikes we've enjoyed the most. Let's begin with Spelunky, which first came out in 2008 as Windows Freeware before getting ports onto the Xbox 360 in 2012 and onto Steam and the PlayStation 3 a year later. In Spelunky, you take control of a cave explorer who likes nothing better than to while away his days underground collecting treasure, fighting all sorts of enemies while avoiding traps, rescuing damsels in return for a boost of your health, all while digging up ancient artifacts and other items. All of Spelunky's levels are like many roguelikes, procedurally generated. This gives players an almost unlimited amount of variation within the gameplay. What's more, Spelunky does what few roguelikes are able to do given the overall nature of the genre, with it being funny in places and generally having a great little side dosage of humour throughout. What's more, it's also one of the best examples of such a game having a local co-op option, and in retrospect, we could have easily added it to our recent video that covered this particular genre. If you haven't seen this yet, you can follow the selected card on screen now, or follow the link down in the description. At number 9 and something just that little bit different. Crypt of the Necro Dancer has you delve deep into the deadly dungeon of dance where you must traverse the levels in time to the cadence of the music. Of course you must do all this while battling dancing skeletons, zombies and much more. While on paper a roguelike rhythm action game sounds like an odd sort of mix, overall it works really well with players needing to get into the groove which can, when things are going well, feel utterly enthralling, and while there are other games within this genre that use a musical or rhythm-based dynamic, we can't recall one that does the whole thing as well as this one does within the play, die, rinse, repeat nature of the good old-fashioned roguelike. You can play Crypt of the Necrodancer on PC, and whichever of the console of this generation takes your fancy. Every hero has a goal. Quest, a final destination. However, most of us are not just natural born heroes. Next up, we have Moonlighter from the summer of 2018. And unlike many of the games in this countdown, it can offer players a roguelike experience that can in places feel rather mellow, which for some will detract from the experience, although for newcomers and those wanting something not just so harsh or stressful, well, this has to be one to take a decent long look at. Once more, it's also, well, it's not that hard to play. Again, something that will be a detraction for some, although we've played this with friends and people who would normally stay away from such hack and slash games, although they came away from it smiling rather than heading to the front door to find a way home. Coupled with a shop-based inventory management system, Moonlighter comes across as something rather quaint and at times tender, with it being one of the best hidden gems of the genre as a whole. For many, our number 7, Binding of Isaac, is perhaps THE quintessential roguelike that came out towards the end of 2011. Since then, it's had numerous updates and iterations, with it landing on pretty much every single platform you can think of. Featuring a story of a child gone into hiding before finding himself within a dungeon with all manner of beasts and nasties looking to kill him off, it's a great game, although not per se our favourite. That said, the bullet hell sections of the bosses late in the game, well they are some of the best of this type of gameplay you can find anywhere. Now if you have completed this one, and that means with every character, we'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Anyone who's seen this game away with the single hit the lost character deserves a huge amount of kudos. In at number 6, FTL Faster Than Light 
has you controlling spaceships and their crew as you make your way across the galaxy while trying to avoid a hostile alien force. While super easy to pick up and play, it's like, well, nearly all of the picks in these video a really decent challenge and hands up, we can't say it's a game we've been able to finish in all the years we've been trying. It first came out back in 2012 and we still do come back to it once or twice a month, even today. What works so well is how it crafts an easy to follow sci-fi narrative about escape and exploration in what's really a simulation game with added rogue elements. The randomness of each galaxy is also a high point with the different enemies you face, events you encounter and characters you meet all being different each time, which in turn has kept FTL fresh and having oodles of replayability. At number 5 in this countdown, coming from the Dutch developers Vlambeer, Nuclear Throne came out in October 2013 with us more recently playing it again on the Nintendo Switch and it's here where this top-down shooter roguelike really shines and like Spelunky at the top of the rundown, it's also one heck of a quality local co-op game to play with you and a few mates. What works so well in Nuclear Throne is not only how it all looks and plays, but how perfectly balanced it all feels within the trade-off for out-and-out -out brute force gunning, but also in the areas where it's quicker sometimes and easier, or just to use a little bit of strategy and common sense to get past a particular stumbling block. The power-ups, the weapons and unlockables are also really fun and entertaining, while occasionally you can end up with a hugely unfair selection of weaponry given the strength of enemies you face, it's also very charming and doing what this one does so very well. Legends tell of an impregnable fortress, and in its depths lies a weapon of immeasurable power. A gun that can kill the past. From one shooter to another, at number four, Enter the Gungeon is a bullet hell affair from Dodge Roll with it published by Devolver Digital. Released in 2016, you enter the Gungeon, an ever-evolving fortress in a single player or co-op, with the end goal to secure the Gungeon's ultimate treasure, a gun that can kill the past. With over 200 guns to collect and plenty secret rooms and areas to find, it's hard as hell in places, although it stays just the right side of the difficulty line for our tastes. You can pick this one up for home PC, the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and more recently, and the platform we've been playing it most on again, the Nintendo Switch. At number three, and from the same team who brought out FTL, Into the Breach came out in early 2018, We've played it exclusively on the Nintendo Switch, although it is also available for home PCs. This game award and UK BAFTA award winning strategy roguelike is thought of and played in a similar way to that of chess, where you really need to think in terms of three or five moves ahead. Now this is possible as the game gives you full and fair warning about the moves your enemies will make, so success and failure comes down to your ability to plan ahead and execute accordingly. We've often played this one in a kind of like committee approach where we've pondered and played moves out on paper perhaps dozens of times. So much so it's a game that while easy to pick up and put down say in half hour chunks, it has the ability to eat up whole evenings and weekends and being honest, while it's here for its rogue qualities, it's also our favourite strategy game of the last five or so years. In the runners-up position for this roguelike countdown, we have Slay the Spire. While this came out in early 2019, it passed us by until very late in the year, with a viewer asking via our at Get Indie Gaming Twitter feed why we hadn't covered it. In this game, you go about moving up a tower while killing off various monsters in what is one of the best deck-building games of the current generation. Having chosen your base character from now four different classes, you begin with a small deck that you build on and expand as you win, which in turn makes you more powerful. Should you lose a battle, however, well, it's back to the bottom of the tower where you start again all over. It's hugely addictive in a positive way, with each playthrough offering something different and affording you the chance to work on and adapt your battle strategies. In a single word, Slay the Spy is a triumph, with there only being one roguelike we'd rather play if given the chance. Can you guess what it is? 
At number one, and for people who already know our thoughts on Dead Cells, no other game really had any chance in this sort of a rundown. Dead Cells is, as many of you will already know, our most loved game here on the channel that we've played ever. It's not just in the stunningly beautiful pixel art or the gorgeous soundtrack and effects, although they help. The real joy for this game, for us, is how it plays, and boy is it pleasantly addictive as we've often said in the past, with the enjoyable combat sections and boss battles all bundled with a sublime progression system that for me is ahead of anything else you can play here in 2020. I'll argue it's one of those games you can play it however you choose to do so, there's platforming, strategy, puzzle-like sections too, and you can adapt your loadout and character to get the most of your method of play. The recent Bad Seeds DLC, well that's added yet further depth and additional longevity, and while it can be frustrating with a steep difficulty curve as you build your character and become more powerful, things not only get easier but a whole nother level of fun. This is really honestly the best things we've ever played, and we can't recommend Dead Cells enough. If you haven't played it and you only decide to pick up one game in this countdown, make sure you add Dead Cells to your wishlist. That's all from us today, hope you've enjoyed this rundown, and whilst you're here please hit that like button if you've liked the video and subscribe if you aren't already. Many thanks for watching and we'll catch you again in the next indie game video.